Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, it's Isis, and come back to another video. Of course, and today we are doing something a little bit special, something that I've been working on for quite some time. See some story time. This is where I go and I draw a couple of things and I tell you guys some stories that I used to do back in the day. All right, your boy got a bunch of stories, man. I have like a list of like 40 different things, but let me tell you, this one is one of my favorite. This is the second time that I went to the hospital. All right, now the first time, well, that's a story for another time. It was when I was like four, but this was when I was around 12 or 13 years old. This is when I was with the homie Furnace and Fiend. Furnace and Fiend, that's not their real name, but I gotta, I gotta come up with a different name for them. So that is their name. They were the homies at that time. There was a park that we used to chill at and there was this beautiful tree, Mag it was massive. And there was a storm that just passed. I think it was like a tropical storm or something. And a bunch of branches went all over the place. Me and Furnace, we were looking around for different branches, but we saw these two massive branches. And we looked at each other and we were like, we had the same idea. Let's turn these into swords. You know how it is. Guys are always with, you know, let, let's try to turn a stick into a sword or a walking stick or a rock into a, a, a ball or something. Listen, it was desperate times back in the day. So we we stripped all the little things off and we just had a, just a straight thing. It looked like a jousting stick. So me and me and Furnace, we were like, yo, this this is going to be fun. Let's do some sword fighting. Fiend was like, yo, I don't think this is th this. We should do this. This tree is sacred. This is this is the tree. The tree would not want this. And we're like, yo, Fiend. Shut up, because <laughs> at that time we were like, you're speaking nonsense. Why would the tree be mad at us? I was wrong. And so me and Furnace, we were like sword fighting and then Fiend was just watching like, yo, something's gonna get hurt, right? He was like, but listen, the tree has spoken. I'm like, man, screw the tree, I don't care. So we're, when we would hit, then when the sticks would hit, it would go boom and make this loud cracking noise. And you can feel the vibration in the stick. And, and it was just like, th this this stick was like at least nine, 10 feet long. Both me and him had pretty long sticks, paws, and, and they were massive. Like it took two hands to swing it. Honestly, if I had another person with me, I probably would use them to help me swing it. But anyway, so the, the, the velocity, the force at which we hit was just immense. So when I swung, I missed. Furnace didn't, he kept going. And that thing hit me right in the head, boom, and I blacked out. And I'm on the floor and I'm looking, blurry vision, and there's just blood all on the grass. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying. And then Furnace and Fiend, they run up to me like, oh, are you okay, is everything okay? And thank goodness, the school was like, not even like 40, 50 feet from us, right? And one of my teachers, we're gonna call her Mrs. S, she comes and she's like, oh my God, I, I saw what happened, oh my God. She was gonna come over and tell us to stop, but instead she came over and watched me die. I should also mention that this was right after school. So this was around three, four o'clock. So she takes me to the nurse's office, Furnace and Fiend follow. We go to the nurse. The nurse goes and looks at me and was like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm dying, please help. So she goes, she gets an ice pack. What a surprise, right? She goes, she gets two ice packs and she puts them on my forehead after she put the gauze and cleaned up the blood or whatever, right? But the, she put these two ice packs, bro, the, the ice was so cold, my eyeball started to freeze. I felt like my whole eyebrow, my eyelid, I was like, I can't even open my eyes no more, I can't see. So I looked like I was dying. Furnace and Fiend, they're looking at me like, yo, homie's gonna die. She calls my mom, my mom comes in and she's like, what's going on? And they were like, um, something happened, I got hurt. And both her and the nurse looking at me with the face like, mm-hmm. So then the nurse goes to my mom, she's like, look, I think you should take him to the hospital, see if he's got a concussion or, or whatever. Hopefully he's not dying. Maybe I'm, I don't have a coma, we'll see what happens, right? So then my mom takes me to the hospital. I'm laying in the hospital for like an hour right? Because I got to go get a CAT scan. Everyone that I knew, all my friends, all my family, everyone's coming to me like I'm dying, right? They're all lining up to see me. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I might have to get stitches and all this other stuff, but it didn't look too bad. Cause when you get hit in the head, blood goes all over the place. It's not too bad. Right. But we wanted to make sure double, double check, right? Everything goes and I'm fine. They send me home. It wasn't until the next day where I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, Oh my God, I have a massive scar on my forehead. How am I supposed to cover this up? My mom was like, nah, you gonna have to go to school like that. And I'm like, please don't make me go to school like this. I don't wanna go to school like this, please. But she was like, okay, you'll take off this, this weekend, but you going to school on Monday, bro. 
So I tried wrapping it up and I thought that maybe that would hide it. No, everyone was like, what's going on? What, what is your what, what is your forehead looking like? I want to see it. I'm like, no, you can't see it. it looks disgusting. And then, well, it brought more attention than I really wanted. But at the end of it all, the scar to this day is still on my forehead. It is one of the two scars that are on my forehead. The other story that I want to tell you is the first time I went to the hospital, but that's a story for another time. But yeah. I went and I told Furnace, I was like, look, it's not your uh, fault. Don't blame yourself. It was me. Okay. I was the one who uh, was the one to blame. All right. Don't blame. Cause he blamed himself. And I was like, no, no, no. It's fine. It's me. I said it. And I was mad at, at Fiend because Fiend was like, man, the speed, the tree has spoken. I'm like, man, this fist about to be spoken. If you keep talking crap, the tree didn't do nothing. Okay. But <laughs> maybe the tree did speak. Okay. And then, you know, whatever. So even still to this day, that tree is still there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was an amazing time. <laughs> <laughs> go getting beat up but anyway so let me know what you guys think did y'all ever get hurt before all right did y'all ever get hit in the head with a tree all right <laughs> let me know maybe i was like maybe all those experiences will give me some motivation to try to come up with different stories i have a bunch i got like 40 50 stories that i want to do definitely but this is one of them i'm definitely probably gonna do the second one it'll be a short one of the the first time i got hurt let me know what you guys think all right should I keep going? Let me, uh, should I, you know, increase my art skills, <laughs> you know, but, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you have any comments, complaints, aches, pains, moans, goes in the comments down below. I get back to you as soon as possible. I love you guys. Stay edgy.